Now, this is all very well, Mike, I hear you say. This is, um, this is all, all easy. We're just going to go back to our offices. We're going to get a load of customers in, and, and you know, we're going to suddenly be a, a new business. But our cult the culture is so critical for us. And I am now going through a process of getting to a point of starting to be able to, to change our culture and starting to, inch by inch, start to change the way we think and feel about the way we come to work. And the first thing that you've got to achieve is recognize that the customer experience management will bring revenue. There has to be that belief that, that this, by taking on these actions, it will deliver revenue. Because that's usually what people come back to you with is, OK, that, that's great. That's a wonderful idea. But how much is it going to cost us? How much is it going to make? And you can't always, always prove it. You can't. But there are people, and I imagine there are people in this room, who, who just get it. You just get it. It's in, it's in there. It's, it's in their gut. It's in their stomach. You say, yeah, I, I recognize this. I believe it. Grab hold of them. Grab hold of them and, and bring them in and work with them as closely as you, as you can. And this is what I'm doing, and this is where you start to, to build a network and spread. The next part is, is, is so crucial, and we've just, we've just come to an end point with this, and that's to develop a and align around the realistic view of where, how customer-centric you are today. If you, want to, the, the, if you think of customer-centricity as the input, customer-centricity is the way you align your business around your customers' needs, the things that you do. The experience, then, is the output of that activity. It's the thing that the customer experiences. So how customer-centric are you to start off with? Now, everyone in your organization will have a different view of what customer-centricity means and how customer-centric they are. And if you go around saying, you are, you aren't, or, you know, uh, you, you can't judge people on saying they are or they're not. Everyone is on a scale to one level or, or another. But you've got to work out what that scale is, and then you've got to take a realistic view of where you are on it. And it's okay to be at the bottom. I'd say most farm organizations are. The next thing would be to, to map your end-to-end -end customer journeys, as I've described before, and agree on priorities for change. And, and as I'm sure you guys will know equally as well as I, then any kind of change, you have to really communicate and over-communicate and over-communicate to make sure that, that uh, everyone's comfortable with the direction that you're taking. Now, with change, with, with the refocus, with looking at customers, then, then no one does it perfectly first time. And this is a, um, uh, an example I've got of uh, an initiative we have in Pfizer, which is, which is acknowledging that. And so we have, a, instead of a center of excellence or a, a leading edge group or, or something that we, that we may more traditionally do, we have a community of practice. And that's acknowledging to say, guys, this is new. We are not going to get this right first time. But have a go. Have a go. Try it. See how you feel. And then come back and tell us how you did. And as a result, the whole organization can then benefit from the, the mistakes, the learning that we pick up from the mistakes, which is so important, uh, as well as the successes that we've developed. Measurement. Um, I left this to, to last, as it really is probably the most important thing. Um, we tend not to measure things in pharma. Or if we do, it's did we spend our budget? How much money did we make? And occasionally, you might have a relationship between these two things, if you're lucky, but probably not. Uh, now, we, we really have to start in to, to, we have to grasp this nettle. We absolutely have to do it. If we're going to change, we're going to have to start measuring better. Uh, and this is a framework that we're introducing back at work of looking at what is the voice of the customer, the metrics that represent the voice of the customer, so we can understand what, how was it for you? Not do you like my sales aid? How was the experience for you? What do you think of this? Is this giving you any value or not? Tell us. We need to know. Voice of the business, how well are we delivering the experience from our own point of view? Things like, are we delivering the right things on the right time? Is this making us any money? What's the return as a result of doing these things? And so important, but something that's really often forgotten is, is voice of the employee. So these, our, our people have to deliver the experience. They, we can't put them in, under so much pressure that, that the experience becomes impossible to be able to deliver or, or set, set expectations too high. We have to know from them, how do you think the experience is? Do you think we're offering value to customers? And this can often be the best way of generating the information we need in a very low cost way to, to improve what we do. <laughs> now there's one thing, it's one thing to measure. 
one thing to collect a lot of metrics, right? But to collect them all, put them in a room, and then only bring them out when you've got important guests and say, hey, look at my metrics. Which, which tends to be what happens when you've got a business review or a senior leadership. Oh, look, we've got lots of numbers. That's great. It's, to me, it's the same as a collector. You know, we're just, it's harvesting all of this stuff. It doesn't do anything. You've got to take action with them. You've got to do something with the information. And this is just a wonderful example that I can show of, of how customer feedback doesn't have to be a number, it doesn't have to be a KPI, uh, of how customer feedback can be used to improve the experience. Now, this is taken on my way to holiday um, just over a week ago at Gatwick Airport. I'm not, I, it's just a wonderful coincidence, but this is the best experience I'd ever had going through security at an airport. It was, it was amazing. They saw I had a, a toddler with a push chair. We had lots of bags. We had two people come to help us. One person put the bags onto the conveyor belt. Another person looked after the buggy. We had me and my wife who just walked through with our son who was a bit, what should we say, um, uh, a little bit tired and emotional. Um, and we got to, everyone was smiling. Everyone helped us. And at the end, at the end of the conveyor belt, there was this. And what a wonderful way of capturing feedback, which is directly having an impact. If you can't see it, it says passenger feedback at the top. It's just a flip chart. It says passenger feedback at the top. And you've got comments from the people who have been through the security desk. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. But everyone who works there, who is delivering the experience, can see it. And they can respond to it. And as a result, I'm certain that the experience that I had and every single other passenger that went through it was exceptional. It really was the best I had. OK. That's the end of my time. Thank you very much for your attention. I do appreciate it.